Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part eight of my programming with Python 2.7 tutorial. Today, I'm going to cover a lot of things like how to allow people to enter an infinite number of attributes, inheritance, how to override methods, polymorphism, how to inherit from two or more classes, and then I'm going to review some additional interesting object functions. Well, one thing that's really irritating about this program that I created last time are these accessor functions. So I'm going to get rid of them, and I'm going to show you how to accept an infinite number of different attributes without all that mess. And I'm also going to get rid of hungry up here and then everything else is pretty much the same except I added a new method here called eat that I previously didn't have. Now I'm going to show you how to make a proper constructor file. If you didn't see the previous tutorials you absolutely have to watch them otherwise you're going to be extremely confused because here I'm going to use my kvargs key value arguments dictionary to allow the user of this class to set up an infinite number of different attributes which is going to be created in this dictionary full of tuples. You guys asked for more complicated tutorials and you're definitely getting it right now. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these attributes attributes and set them up based off of the key valued pairs that are sent to this constructor and there you have a real constructor set up for you. And then what I'm going to do is I need to create a way for the user of this class to be able to set up arguments and I'm going to create a method inside of here called set attributes and it's going to do just that. It's going to accept key value pair as you see right there. And then I'm remember self is a reference to the object that is created with this class. And all I'm doing is setting up the attributes here. And this one function is now going to take the place of all the accessor functions that I previously was using. It's going to do it all automatically for me. And this get function will return any attributes as long as I supply it with the proper key. And you're going to see in a second how this works. And you could also do this inside of Python with something called properties, but I'll save that for a later tutorial. Okay, so now this guy's going to allow you to create as many attributes as you need. Now I'm going to go into exactly what we mean by inheritance. And make sure that you take out your indent here because we're going to define a new class. And this class is going to be named dog. And remember, it's good practice to have all of your classes start off with an uppercase letter. And we are going to inherit all of the methods and attributes of the class animal by placing them inside of here where we are defining our class dog. And as you see up here with animal, we did not inherit any other methods. Well, we technically did. You basically inherited the base object with this. But you can see that there's no braces here. And here we specifically are adding the animal methods and attributes. And that is what we mean by inherits. Now I got to create a constructor file for this new class and you do it in pretty much the same way except for one thing. I am going to call specifically and this is going to set up some errors here until I fix it. This is going to call the constructor file to set up all the attributes up here. So it's actually this line of code is going to call this constructor to set up all those attributes for me. And I'm passing it the object dog so that it can easily do that. And then I'm going to set up the specific attributes for this new dog class. Okay, but this line of code is not usable inside of Python 2.7 without first going up here and typing this line of code. Two underscores meta class two underscores is equal to type and meta classing is kind of a complicated subject just to understand that this line of code is going to allow you to use the new Python 3.0 object functions inside of Python 2.7 and one of the options that's provided by putting in that line of code is the ability to use this super function which is very very useful and so that is inheritance and now what I'm going to do is show you how to override a function now, of course, dogs make the er noise, but they also make the ever popular wolf noise. So what we're going to do is we're going to override this function and instead say wolf wolf. So now whenever noise is called for a dog specific object, it is going to print out wolf wolf overriding the original er noise. But how would you access the er noise because dogs make that er noise as well? and print out the original, the inherited class noise for the animal class. How would you access that? Simple, just start off with animal followed by noise, braces, and then place self inside of that. And that's gonna provide you with the ability to use this new ability, plus on top of that, use the previous methods as well. And we are also going to create another inherited class called cat. And this is later gonna be used to explain polymorphism. And to save time, I'm just gonna copy this, but instead come in here and change this to cat. 
and of course change this to meow and get rid of this all together. And I'm going to also come in here and create another method called noise2 and a per noise. Now I'm going to create another function outside, remember, of this class called play with animal. I'm going to pass to it an animal object and then I'm going to call a couple different functions. All this code is available at New Think Tank, by the way, for free, obviously. And here I'm going to get the attribute named name. And remember the double underscore makes this attribute private. And then I'm also going to get the attribute owner. And then I'm going to jump down into main and create me a dog object for the class dog. I'm going to assign it a name of Jake. And then I'm also going to create an owner, Paul. Here I'm creating objects. And I'm going to create another object called Sophie. And it's going to be of type cat and name Sophie. And make the owner Sue. I don't know anybody named Sue or Paul, by the way. Kind of funny. And then this is polymorphism. Play with animal, and I'm gonna pass it Sophie. Instead, even though it accepts of type animal, I'm passing it an object of type cat, which remember is inherited. It inherited all the classes and attributes from the animal class. And if I run this, you can see that this is what we call polymorphism. I am passing a class that is not of type animal, but inherits from type animal. And Python and in object-oriented programming in general, it automatically accepts this animal. And whenever these methods are called, it says this and it figures out, the interpreter figures out completely on its own that yes, this is an object that inherited from animal. So I'm going to accept it. It's okay okay to use. But whenever these individual methods are called, it is going to actually call the original objects method, the new methods that overrided the animal methods that were inherited. This is polymorphism. It figures it out all on its own. So I can send this any type of animal, anything that inherits from animal, and it's automatically going to figure it out for me. And I'm going to come in here and run this again so that it's separated. And so you can see that it comes to animal noise and it automatically calls the cat version of noise. Crunch crunch did not change. Eat was not changed and neither was move. And so hence it just used the previous animal method that was inherited. And then here you can see I used the get attributes to receive both the name and the owner of the cat. And then on down here you can also see where er shows up and that's wherever we reference the previous meaning the animal noise method. So there's a lot of stuff going on inside of there, but this is in essence polymorphism, just figuring it out on its own on the fly. And if I want to set or create any additional attributes, like for example, let's say I want to create a clean attribute for the cat and dog. Now let's just come in here. And again, we can use a reference to the animal object and define a key value pair, starting off with clean and giving it the value of yes. And if I would want to reference this new attribute that I created, just call print animal dot get underscore attributes. And then the key that I want to reference being clean. And I want to get rid of those quotes. And you can see here, I went in and created this new attribute and it printed out yes, because that's the value that I set for it. Well, I previously mentioned you could also create classes that borrow or inherit from multiple different classes. Well, here I'm going to explore what would happen if a cat and dog mated. And all you do is put your additional classes in here that you want to inherit from, and they are going to be assigned to the new class you create, and I'm just calling it dat. And again, I'm going to come down here, create a constructor. And the constructor works the same, even though it's two classes you're using here. It's going to set them all up. I'm going to override the function move here. And let's just say that something kind of went wrong whenever these two animals made it. And this dat, as we're calling it, just chases its tail. Tails. Now, whenever I put dog first, that means that because, of course, we have different noises for the cat class as well as for the dog class, what that means is in circumstances in which both of these classes both have methods with the same name, whichever class is listed first is going to be the class method that's going to be used in instances where both of the classes inherited have a method with the same name. Okay, And we jump down into main and create a new method of type dat and give it the name Jaffy <laughs> and we're saying that Sue is stuck with this poor animal. We're going to call for Jaffy to move, get that print out of there, and the noise function to demonstrate how dog overtook that. And you can see here, Chase's tail, but like the dog, because we listed dog first, when you call noise, it is going to call 
the dog's noise and not the cat's noise. However, Jaffe is still going to be able to use noise too, which is only available in the cat class, and also purr. So Jaffe is able to chase tail, wolf like a dog, and also purr like a cat. So it's like a combination of those two different classes. If you want to be able to get the attribute name for Jaffe, and you can see that Jaffe was returned. There's also a whole bunch of really kind of cool functions you can use to analyze objects with inside of Python. Like let's create an object of type cat. Well, you can ask Python if, for example, cat is a subclass of animal. Just by typing is subclass, followed by cat, animal. You can see that the answer is true on that. You also can get it to print out the base class of any class, two underscores, bases. Get it to print out all the objects of a specific class. Get it to print out an object's class. Or get it to print all of an object's attributes. And you can see right here on the right side of the screen that it did just that. One of the questions you might have is in regards to how to implement interfaces inside of Python. The ability to create in interfaces is not built into Python, but is available by importing modules or libraries or whatever you want to call them. And I'm going to discuss this in a later tutorial. And Python has something that are called protocols, which are similar to interfaces as well. And I'm also going to cover those in future tutorials. But between this tutorial and the previous tutorial, that really goes over a lot of the meat of object-oriented programming inside of Python. If there's anything you didn't quite get, leave a question or comment below, and I'll help work you through object-oriented programming with Python. Till next time.